I'm joined now by the leader of the Labour group, Hugo Pound. Hugo, you are in power at the moment as part of a coalition with the Liberal Democrats and the Tunbridge Wells Alliance. How has the past year gone? It has been a challenge, but an enjoyable one. I think that the partnership is actually working well in that the three parties have pretty similar ideas and views about the priorities that we need to address. There has been some criticism from the Conservatives that the coalition has overreacted in terms of the financial situation, has made unnecessary cutbacks and increases in parking charges. Given that the end of the year the council is actually in surplus, is, haven't they got a point? I mean, if parking charges were lower, couldn't more people have gone into shops and it wouldn't have it, it helped local businesses more? The Conservative administration set the budget in April 2022 and they were anticipating a deficit of £943,000 and we were additionally told that the upcoming year, which is 2023-24, there would be a deficit of £2.469 million. So this year we have been focusing upon trying to ensure that we didn't go at least beyond that deficit that had been anticipated and at the beginning of our administration we had no sense of how inflation was going to hit us But the one matter that has helped us come through with a surplus, it was Liz Truss, who very helpfully completely confounded the markets and our accounting people at the council made significantly more sums on interest on our investments in that period. And we have come out nearly £700,000 ahead. But the Conservatives say you've only ended up with earning a lot of interest because the council has assets, it has cash in the bank to earn interest on. And it was the Conservatives who left the Uh, assets, the cash assets in the bank for the council? Well, the cash assets that the council has predominantly have come about through the disposal of our council housing in 1992. And so a huge sum of, of money has been sitting around. But of the 23,000 or uh, 23 million or so that we currently have, almost all of it is earmarked for future projects, for the maintenance and upkeep of car parks, of the assembly hall, of the town hall, you know, and so on. So it is, it's nice for people to say, oh, you know, they've got lots of money in the bank. The reality is that almost all of it is earmarked already for projects that need to, it needs money for. You're in charge of housing for the council and the council's plans for building a whole new settlement of 3,000 homes near Tewsley took a bit of a knock when the government inspector said that that plan was not proven to be sustainable. Now, given that the central government seems not so set on firm housing targets for every borough anymore, isn't it time perhaps to drop this plan for building on green fields between Tewsley and Capel? Well, the officers are currently doing a whole load of work. We will take the advice of the officers when eventually that's done, which I think will be about June, about whether we should progress with the plan as we currently have it or whether we need to do something on a slightly more shrunken scale. But that work is is gone ongoing and I won't won't comment on on it anymore. Will the full council have a free vote on whether the plan should continue? I can't talk for other parties, but our members will have a free vote, yes. And and when will councillors get to have a vote? If we get to the point where the officers have done their work by June. I would imagine that it'll probably go to full council probably in September. There are many people in Tunbridge Wells who are homeless and on low incomes. What have you been able to do in the last year to help them? We have been doing quite a lot with both families and individuals who are in temporary accommodation. That is accommodation that we as a council fund. We've also initiated a new project which has been pretty successful so far, which is taking homeless people and helping them into employment and secure tenancies to the point where their employment pays for their tenancy. And we are, of course, waiting for the local plan to be enacted so that we are more able to hold developers to account for ensuring that we build more affordable housing. At the moment, it is very difficult to get developers to build social or affordable housing in new developments. We are the only district in Kent where the 25 to 49-year-old population is going down. And the reason that it's going down is that almost none of that group can afford to either move into the borough or remain here if they then want to have a family. And that, to me, is an absolute disaster. We don't want to be you know, a giant retirement borough. When people go to the, the polls on the 4th of May, can you just sum up for me why you think they should vote Labour? People should vote Labour, I think, in Tunbridge Wells because we represent a fairer and greener future. Fairer basically means that those who use services should be paying for them, 
those who are struggling and finding it difficult should be helped more than perhaps is the case at the moment. And a greener borough is about ensuring that we pursue actively our carbon reduction plan. Less cars, less fumes and a nicer environment, less pesticides will be used in our parks and in our gardens and Labour leads the way in being a fairer and greener party. Hugo Pound from the Labour Group on Tunbridge Wells Borough Council. Thanks very much. I'm joined now by Lucy Willis of the Tunbridge Wells Alliance Party. Lucy, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about the Tunbridge Wells Alliance Party? Hi. Yes, the Tunbridge Wells Alliance were formed in 2017. We were a essentially a protest group who got together when we discovered that the council were planning on spending an enormous amount of public money on the Calvary Square project, which was not something that the local people were really wanting or essentially needing. And you've won more and more support over the last three or four years. And after last year's election, the Conservatives lost their overall majority. And now there's a coalition of the Liberal Democrats, Labour and yourselves who are actually running the council. So how has it gone in the past year when the Conservatives haven't been in power? What's, what's been different? I think now the Conservatives aren't in, there's just more flexibility and openness to other voices, other ideas. I think when you've just got one party, they have very fixed ideas about what they want to do. Now it's open to everyone. Everyone can actually have a voice. Everyone can speak. Everyone can contribute and put their ideas into the council. Before, it was very closed. It was very insular. Now it's much more diverse. We've got people from all the different parties. It's more vibrant, more more ideas, more dynamic. And I think it's just a much better way for for everybody. So you're actually finishing your four-year term as as a councillor. So you're not standing again, actually, for, for this election. But tell us a bit about your approach when people came to you over those four years in, in terms of issues they came to the local councillor. What, what approach did you take? I mean, I just took the approach of being a friendly person who wants to try and help people who don't have a voice. When you are a, a resident, you don't even know how to approach things. It's very difficult. The council is like this wall where you have to sort of think about how can I get what I want? How can I actually find a way to solve the problem that I've got? So, for example, before I became a hair counsellor, I wouldn't have had a clue. I didn't even really know what a counsellor was or did. So I guess, you know, I would just approach it as a normal person and just try and help people the best way I could. What was the main issue that you came across? You were representing Speldhurst and Bidborough. What, What were the most of the issues that got emailed to you? I suppose most of the issues were, like the majority would be, regarding planning applications. There were things like, there was a school issue. The first thing I took on board when I became a councillor was problems with the school in Langton with the parking. There was nowhere for people to park. The the residents there were getting very annoyed and fed up with people parking up on the curb. They couldn't get their cars out. In a rural community, you're going to get very different issues to a town community. So they were mostly, mostly planning. We've got another election coming up. And people have got quite a wide choice in many areas of which party to vote for. Why do you think it's a good idea that people vote for the Tunbridge Wells Alliance? If you're going to vote for a national party, you're going to vote for their policies and their politics. If you're going to vote for a local party, you're going to vote for honesty, transparency. We're independent. We're not We're not affiliated to Westminster parties. We're not governed by Westminster. All we're about is looking after local residents and thinking about their needs and what, what is best for them. We, we're not interested in what Labour are doing or the Lib Dems are doing or the Conservatives are doing. We're, we're only interested in the local people and the issues that affect them on a day-to-day basis. We have some fantastic councillors already who are doing amazing, incredible work in the community and all the people that we have as that are coming up to be to, to hopefully to be elected are, are similar of, of a similar ilk. We are the party of the people. We have proved that with Calvary Square. We took that on. We grew from one councillor to now nine. And it's growing and growing and growing in, in, in strength and support throughout the whole community of Tunbridge Wells. Lucy Willis of the Tunbridge Wells Alliance Party. Thank you very much. I'm joined now by Jeff Mason, who's chair of the Tunbridge Wells Green Party. Jeff, the Green Party doesn't have any councillors in Tunbridge Wells at the moment. So how are you approaching this election? 
Well, we're really excited this year to be standing candidates in all 16 wards. It's something we've not done before, and we absolutely want to give everybody who wants to vote Green the chance to vote Green. We look enviously across the 23 Green councillors across Kent, but there are none on Tunbridge Wells Borough Council, and that's something we want to change. So the Borough Council at the moment is run by a coalition of the Liberal Democrats, Labour and the Tunbridge Wells Alliance Party. How do you think they're doing? They've been in power for a year. What's their record been, do you think? From a Green Party perspective, we look at how they've done on the climate emergency. This was declared in 2019, but it doesn't feel very much like an emergency. The original proposal, for example, was to include citizens' assemblies. What happened to this? And if we look at their own figures, the target was to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2030. And the pathway to do this was for around 2,500 tonnes to be produced in 2022. But by their own figures, they're on for 3,000. 700 tonnes. So this is um, just in the borough of Tunbridge Wells? This is just in the borough of Tunbridge Wells, absolutely. So we, we think that at the moment it's going to miss their net zero target by 2030 by some considerable margin. And it's not the emissions of everybody who lives in Tunbridge Wells, it's just th- the things that the council has control of? 100%, absolutely right. One big issue locally is housing. And the local plan proposes a new large town of around 3,000 people between Tudley and Capel. The National Housing Inspector has thrown doubts on the sustainability of that, but the Borough Council Coalition seems to be pressing on trying to make that still happen. What do you think of this plan to build a new town between Tudley and Capel? I think it's absolutely heartbreaking. If you look at the impact on the countryside around Capel, the size and the scale of the proposals are far, far beyond anything that the wards can deal with. A a new town, effectively, that's what it will be, will bring so much pollution, a spoiled landscape, loss of wildlife habitat and protected species, and it's completely in the wrong place. I mean, there are flooding risks as well. Now, the Matthew Birkinshaw, the inspector, was basically giving a steer that this whole proposal should be dropped altogether. And so we are absolutely astonished that Tunbridge Wells Borough Council are spending £851,000 of, of council taxpayers' money to basically try and justify something that any normal person would say is completely mad. So so, so if a Green councillor was elected, would you say that they would vote to end that proposal? Without question. But you do then end up having a problem in that are there enough new places for people to live, young people to live in this area? We know that there are 4,934 hectares of brownfield sites across the region And we also know that the calculation for the amount of new housing needed was based on 2014 ONS data, which was wrong. So if the correct data were used and brownfield sites were investigated, we are absolutely convinced that the use of greenfield sites could be dropped altogether. Brownfield is basically land that's already been built on. Yes. And the Green Belt, let's not forget how precious an area that is. I mean, the Green Belt is such a valuable resource for everybody. It was described once as London's lung. It is a a, a biodiverse environment. It helps our wildlife, our mental health for people who live nearby. And it must be protected at all costs. And so, you know, to see this urban sprawl potentially going on on this lovely land is, is just plain wrong. So finally, Jeff. Jeff, how would you sum up why people should vote Green on May the 4th? I think it's really important for the people of Tunbridge Wells to have a Green councillor elected. It means that that person can challenge the council, hold them to account and make sure that effective services are delivered, balancing environmental sustainability. And we say that a Green in the room can make a difference. That was Jeff Mason from the Tunbridge Wells Green Party. Don't forget that in some voting areas there are candidates who don't belong to the five parties we've heard from. So to find out who exactly you can vote for, do check the Tunbridge Wells Borough Council website. You need to look under Council and Voting and Elections.